like me, you've been gaming since PS1, you'll know of and probably have played Tekken 3. Tekken 3 was the third iteration of the immensely popular arcade-style fighting game franchise, considered by many to not only be the best of the series, but one of the greatest games of that era. Of course, today, what I want to analyze is the music from Tekken 3, which was, and still is, epic. The team behind Tekken 3's soundtrack, a group of five Japanese video game composers, had a daunting task. Each character in Tekken 3 has a distinct visual identity and background story. From Eddie Gordo, the capoeira fighting Brazilian, and Lei Wulong, an homage to Hong Kong police dramas, to Gon, a tiny but powerful orange dinosaur. When you played the game, the character you were fighting against dictated the backdrop and the music of that fight. Every match was fun to play, thanks to exciting fighting styles, moves, and combinations unique to each character. But imagine, what playing this game would be like without good music, or any music at all? Weird and maybe even boring. But with it, hour upon hour of gaming bliss. As I mentioned, the composers had a daunting task. Not only did they have to create original and dynamic pieces of music for each individual character and cutscene, but they also had to make sure that it stayed coherent stylistically as a whole. For their inspiration, they turned to Big Beat, an electronic music genre pioneered in England, which broke out into the mainstream music market in the 1990s thanks to acts such as the Chemical Brothers and the Prodigy. Built over a foundation of explosive loop drum beats, Big Beat music made heavy use of synthesizers as well as traditional rock instrumentation such as the electric guitar. With its fast tempos and ability to incorporate elements from different genres such as rock, soul, hip-hop and even indigenous musics from various parts of the world, Big Beat was the perfect fit for a fighting game with diverse characters like Tekken 3. In this analysis, I'm going to be breaking down the tracks to several characters within the game and how these pieces of music were able to serve as an additional characterizing tool apart from visual design, in particular the use of timbre and instrumentation. For anyone who doesn't know, timbre in music refers to the quality of a particular sound. It's how we can tell the difference between a voice or a piano singing or playing the same note. Timbre is often exploited in classical music and opera to denote different characters. A perfect example is Sergei Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, a symphonic work composed for children in which each character is played by a different instrument in a congruous way. The bird, for example, is played by a flute. And Peter's grumpy grandfather by the low bassoon. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Of course, timbre is not the only trick in the book to aid in musical characterization. There's harmony and rhythm and melody as well, but it's a very powerful one and the most immediate to our sense of hearing. With that out of the way, let's turn to the analysis of Tekken 3's music. I'm going to start with Mokujin's theme because it's probably the most obvious, yet deceptively simple one. Mokujin is a wooden practice dummy that, contrary to other characters in the game, doesn't have his own fighting style like judo or karate. Instead, he mimics the fighting style of another character in that current tournament, changing style after each round. The opening to this theme is a repeated four-bar phrase shared between a synthesized bass and some kind of wooden instrument. It's clearly been manipulated electronically, but this wooden sound that loops throughout the entire piece as an ostinato seems to be a combination of xylophone and wooden block samples and it serves as the perfect bass for this particular piece. What do I mean by bass? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Mokujin copies the fighting styles of different characters within the game. The composers ingeniously interwove different fragments from other characters' themes into Mokujin's theme. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Jack is a Russian fighting robot with a human heart. Starting with crashing cymbals, this track makes heavy use of a loud, abrasive rock drum kit that adds a metallic timbre to the piece. Later, a distorted vocal loop 
which is the only time anything resembling a human voice appears in all of the Tekken 3 tracks, joins the texture. Then, a distorted electric guitar sample loops, sounding a bit like an electronic heartbeat, symbolizing the juxtaposition between man and machine that Gunjack represents. In the middle break, before the music comes back with reverb and increased intensity, we hear a kind of ripping rhythmic sample, which makes me think that the sound designers behind the Transformer movies might have played Tekken 3 back in the day. What an effective way to acoustically and musically communicate heavy machinery. I live in Hong Kong, so I have to represent for Forest Law a character based on the immortal Bruce Lee. This one is a bit more subtle than the last two, but sometimes music works in more mysterious ways. The synthesizers here sound like something without being that something in an overt way, and by doing this, the music pulls out associations from your subconscious without running the danger of being cliché. By the way, this was my brother's favorite character because he would do this backflip over and over and over again until I died every single time. So it drove me crazy. In Forest Law's theme, one of the synthesizers used is reminiscent of Chinese gongs. And then the counter melody, played by synthesized strings, Stylistically speaking, reminds me of those 1960s and 70s action film melodies, often also played by uninterrupted strings. For example, check out John Barry's theme to Bruce Lee's film, The Game of Death. Last, but not least, is the final boss of the game. Now, you'd think that with the final boss, the music would totally match, be scary and intense, but in fact, it does the opposite. Ogre's theme is so calm and sparse, compared with the other characters' themes, that this counterintuitive choice actually freaks you out more, because you think, I'm about to get my ass kicked. Heavily distorted guitar riffs rip through this piece, revealing the monster beneath the surface, and once you beat him, he literally becomes a monster, because instead of winning the game, Ogre comes back for one more match as true Ogre. In the music, this is marked by an increase in reverb, and there's more development in the electric guitar riffs. However, it's still pretty smooth and chilled out overall, which is in total contrast with what you're seeing on the screen which is a huge, fire-breathing, humanoid, dragon monster person. Only at the very end do we have an increase in intensity, which might have marked the point when your character died. If you didn't die, you'd get to see that character's end scene. Each one elaborated on a different part of that character's backstory and on the plot of the game in general. In a time before YouTube, you really had to play the whole game to see the final scene for that character. Unless, of course, you unlocked cinema mode, which, of course, my brother and I did. I'm sure many people have, like me, really, really fond memories of this game. Almost 20 years later, the music really stands the test of time, even if the graphics and the gameplay have not.